Okay, so now we're going to talk about radicals, and this is going to look different at first. We're going to find we'll obey all the same rules, and what we know up to this point is going to help us a lot. So recall in chapter 1, we talked about heterolytic bond cleavage. When you had some bond, the electrons go off with one of the atoms and not the other. We referred to homolytic at the time, but we didn't say much about it. So heterolytic is what we've been doing all along in the past, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 chapters, right? Well, now we're going to talk about homolytic cleavage. And if the movement of two electrons is indicated by an arrow with a double barbed, a double barbed arrow, then the movement of one electron is going to be one arrow, or one barbed arrow, right? So uh, Klein calls these fish arrows. I'm going to call them single barbed arrows. Uh, if you're talking about the movement of two electrons, you're going to use that. If you use an arrow that looks like that, that means one electron is moving, okay? Here's two electrons moving, and here's one electron moving, okay? Now, the, uh, if, you have in a carb if you have a carbocation, then you have an empty unhybrid sp orbital, right, with a lobe up top and a lobe down bottom. And so the, S the um, carbocation takes on an sp2 hybridized shape or, or um, hybridization, which is a trigonal planar, right? Well, a carbanion's got two electrons that actually spend, you know, they're, they're mostly up here, a little bit down here, right? So this takes on a trigonal pyramidal. It's sp sp3 hybridized, um, but a radical is going to be uh, sp2 hybridized. And it turns out it's going to look kind of like this, where the electron's spending uh, a lot most of its time up here, some down here, and it turns out that you're going to have a, a sort of a mildly hybridized p orbital, which really ends up because of its equilibrium feeling to the molecule like an unhybridized p orbital. Let's talk about the stability now of radicals. Radicals are neutral, they have no charge, but they do have an incomplete octet, so they're not as stable as, uh, as compounds that have all completed octets, right? Radicals follow the same stability as carbocations. Carbocations, you recall, are most stable when they're tertiary, and that's the case with, uh, with radicals as well. Least stable is methyl, and you can see you've got one carbon-carbon bond here that makes that primary. Here's two carbon-carbon bonds that makes that secondary. And the most stable, as I said before, is, is tertiary. Uh, equivalently, since those are the most stable, it takes the least amount of energy to break that bond. That's the weakest bond, right? So at 381, the tertiary has got the, this will be the tertiary radical when it's broken, right? You see that there? So when we break that bond, it only takes 381 kilojoules per mole. A methyl takes 435 kilojoules per mole, right? So look at the difference here. Uh, 381, 397, 410. So the, the, the more stable the radical, the easier it is to break that bond, of course, right? Now, radicals uh, are stabilized by resonance, as you might have guessed. I guess if you'd had a chance. This seems like a little bit like arbitrary. Why would you have guessed that? Well, let me show you this, and then this may look familiar. If you take this this uh, this uh, radical, which is in a lilic position, right, it can go, it can spend its time there as well, and you can take one of these pi electrons and go there and make a pi bond. And then the other electron can go here, right, and that's what these arrows here indicate, leaving the radical here, there, right. So it turns out then that just like carbocations, radicals can be uh, resonance stabilized um, in the allylic position. Now, if allylic is good, benzylic is even better, right? Because that's kind of that that looks kind of allylic right there, doesn't it? But once the once the uh, radical gets to that position, then it can keep going, right, and go all the way around that circle. So it turns out benzylic radicals are more stable than allylic because of this uh, stabilization. The um, so. The resonance stabilized radicals are more stable. Uh, resonance stabilized are more stable than tertiary radicals, and here's the here's the measures that will tell you how much more stable. The bond dissociation energy for a benzylic radical is 356, 364 for allylic, and it's 381 for tertiary. Right? And you remember, I think uh, primary was 410. I think. So excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. All right. So again, the the more stable the radical, 
the easier it is to break that bond, and that's what this 356 means. And finally, vinylic radicals are especially unstable, just like vinylic cations, okay? So if you take an allylic, we just saw on a previous slide, that was 364 kilojoules per mole to break that. It takes 410 to break this one, which is primary, and it takes 464, which is really a lot more, to break that, uh, to break that carbon-hydrogen bond. So a radical in an sp2 hybridized orbital is less stable than one in an sp3 hybridized orbital. That's an introduction to radicals now. Uh, well, there's a lot more to come. So hold on to your hats, and uh, we'll we'll take this path together.